Hello there, people of Earth. Thanks for checking me out again. Uh, so this one's a long time coming. Um, Electra, she's been out for about two years now, and uh, I've been kind of, I don't know, off and on the, the fence thinking about whether or not I was going to do a review for her. Um, but I figure why not? I've got a little bit of time on my hands, so why not shoot a review? So <clears throat> Electra is probably one of my favorites in my collection. Um, I, I always like characters. Uh, Electra as a character, and uh, pretty much every character that I like that Shinji Yamashita does, I like his interpretation of, and naturally want to see a uh, statue for it. So I was pretty stoked about Electra when uh, they announced her and showed the um, illustration. Um, so I knew this was one I was getting uh, right off the bat. This one was a little bit delayed uh, when it came out. Um, I believe... Uh, one came out before it that wasn't supposed to. I think uh, Mystique actually was supposed to come out after Electra, and Electra ended up coming after Mystique. Anyway, um, I really, uh, I really do like this one. Although with it being two years old, um, that's kind of where I find its problems. And what I mean by that is that in those subsequent two years, Kodo has learned some new tricks and to kind of refine their techniques. Um, so there's a few things about the this statue that doesn't really quite hold up uh, now that the ones that they have refined and that are getting better are starting to come out. This one doesn't, uh, I don't know, it's not bad by any means, but uh, what I'm talking about is uh, her face, for one. That's probably, there's basically two things about this, this character that I, uh, or this statue <clears throat> that I have a problem with. Um, one is basically the the accuracy to its illustration. Now, that's, this is something that I used to complain about a lot and have since really kind of given up on. And, uh, you know, Kodo has done well uh, since these last two years when they basically have always used these illustrations as kind of a blueprint, or, uh, and a, you know, an idea of what the pose should be and uh, the feeling of the character and basically how it should look. Um, and they've never really nailed it. Um, it always varies a little bit here and there, um, for one reason or the other. And uh, they've gotten better. It seems like nowadays you get to pick up one of these statues and they will look better than the original illustration, uh, in a lot of cases. Um, didn't used to be that way, at least not in my opinion. Uh, a lot of times when they varied from the illustration, they ended up not looking as good. Um, so for this one in particular, sorry about this weird transition, I had to fix something that was bothering me. Anyway, um, for this one in particular, um, it's a couple of things. One is her face. Um, like I say, the focus doesn't really quite seem to be there. Um, in the illustrations, he's clearly looking at something that's maybe slightly above her. Um, and on this one, in the actual uh, statue, she's looking at something maybe straight on, but you can't quite pinpoint where that is. Um maybe right there, and then when you look at her from this angle, I don't know, she has kind of a blank expression on her face, like she's not all there. Um, and that's something that they've changed recently. A lot of figures, I don't know, it seems like a very, very slight difference about maybe just the positioning of the eyes inside of the uh, face, but um, it makes a difference. And I, I looking at her now, after seeing some of the other ones that they've released, um, it's more evident to me now than it was when I got her that uh, it really does make a difference, like where she her eyes are focused. At least to me, I, I don't know. I don't know if other people consider that kind of stuff or if they care, but uh, I do, and um, that's one of the things they've gotten better at. One of the other things that is a little bit of a discrepancy between uh, the statue and the illustration is the tone of her skin. Electra is Greek, um, of Greek descent, and she should have kind of some, I don't know, olive skin, and the statue is pretty pale, really. Um, there's a little bit of skin tone to her, um, if you look at her kind of in passing, I guess, but I don't know, by and large, she's pretty pale, and a little more pale than I would have expected Electra to be. Um, this is, I think, kind of the way it goes with Kodo. 
Um, not Kodo. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it is just Kodo, but it seems like, uh, I don't know, I think it's probably because it's a Japanese company, and maybe that's a, a weird thing to say, or maybe <laughs> sounds odd, but I think, uh, I don't think they appreciate skin tone like, uh, <laughs> like I do. I'll put it that way. But, um, whoever's in charge over there, they did the same thing with, um, Mystique. Mystique is kind of a pale, like, smurf blue. Um, and Mystique's never really been a pale blue like that. Um, seems like they've got, uh, Christy from Tekken. Uh, they got her skin tone pretty good. Uh, she was definitely a darker tone than the other characters. Um, I'm not sure that even then that she was quite as dark as she is in the games. I got a feeling that if, uh, hopefully, if and when they make She-Hulk, that that's probably going to be the same. She'll be a kind of a powdery green. Um, but, you know, that's fine. I don't really, I don't really care. But I think in this instance, it would have looked a little better for her. Have a little slightly darker shade of skin. Uh, and the other point, <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to make is the discrepancy between the, the illustration and the statue is, uh, the illustration is much more dynamic, and that's really just because her uh, sash and uh, whatever this is <laughs> that flows down between her legs and the front and the back is blowing off to the side there pretty pretty far to the side, but that makes it look a little bit more dynamic. If you don't have the illustration to compare the statue to, I really wouldn't complain about much. Overall, I think the sculpt and the pose is really good. It's one of my favorites, actually. Um, I think she looks really, really nice uh, kind of in that pose, where she's kind of striding across this rooftop. I like that a lot, actually. But um, I think if they were to make it a little more dynamic, I think her hair turned out really nice. It's not quite as wild as it is in the illustration, but uh, I think if they had her sashes there blowing off to the side, that would have made it a little more dynamic, a little more interesting to look at. Um, I think it would have been a lot more eye-catching having this red paint kind of all over the place. All right, so one other discrepancy is um, the st the uh, costume itself is not really accurate to what uh, Shunya drew. Um, it's close, but not quite there. And the biggest difference is the uh, piece covering her crotch, basically. I don't know if this was the reason for the delay or what, but I would imagine that um, Marvel probably figured that this was a little too revealing or maybe too a little too provocative. I don't. I wouldn't agree with that. I think the more provocative, the better. That's just me. But you can see this uh, cloth that comes down the front of her is much wider at the hips. Um, also, her her panties underneath here, this line, um, you can see in the illustration it kind of um, is right underneath the top of the, her hip bone, and in this it's pretty much firmly right over the top of it. Um, so they kind of kept that a little bit more out of view. You can't quite see it as well um, as you can in the illustration. And plus, you really don't see much of the front of her pelvis at all. It's all pretty much concealed. Um, it looks to me, and I don't know if I can get any of this on video, because I can barely see it looking at it in person. It looks to me like that her underwear, basically, were sculpted and molded the same way as they were in the illustration, or at least um, it, it, it makes sense to me looking at it that this front piece could have been smaller at some point, um, and that they maybe have widened, widened it out. Um, but, you know, it's fine the way it came out, but I would have preferred that. I mean, this isn't any more revealing than, let's say, like a bikini or something, but um, for whatever reason, they, I think they, I, I'm guessing some decision was made later, or at some point, to make this a little wider than it is in the illustration. Um... If you look at the back, it actually is kind of squared off. Um, it's kind of hard to see with all the stuff and in, in kind of in the way here, but um, this cloth that goes up, it goes up kind of square to the sash that goes around her waist. It doesn't spread out from the sides uh, like this one does. This one kind of drapes back in. I'm thinking that this thing was probably much narrower uh, in the initial sculpt, and that was the reason it was delayed. But that's just a guess. Would have preferred that. So, the fact that the um, the illustration I think is better than than what the statue ended up as, but that doesn't make this a bad statue. I, I think even despite that, um, that turned out really well. I like her a lot. 
Um, so let's get this out of here for now. And uh, like I was saying, I think if you don't have the box art to look at, and I don't keep them stored or on the shelf next to the box art, um, just looking at her in and of itself is um, pretty satisfying to me. I think this is one of their better figures. Um, it's certainly one of my favorites. And uh, in no small part, thanks to this uh, paint job they've given her. And man, she really does look... Uh, the, the, all this red paint... This metallic red paint uh, really pops, and uh, it's very eye-catching. That's why I feel like if all of this right here, instead of just falling behind her and getting lost behind her when you're looking at her, if it was blowing off to the side, um, it looked pretty awesome. Same thing with her, her sash behind her head. Um, those red ribbons that go off to the side are pretty cool looking. You kind of lose them a little bit when you look at her from the front, but, uh, you know... I, th I just feel like it would have been more dynamic. Um, but the paint itself is, is done really well. I like it a lot. Let me get a good look at her face here. Um, one kind of little weird thing, and this is very gripey, but um, her kind of skull cap thing that she wears, um, there's like a weird... I don't know, the way her hair comes out from underneath it from the front looks great. If you look just from underneath it, I don't know, the thing, it doesn't look like cloth anymore. It looks like she's wearing a little helmet or something. But, I don't know, that's kind of a dumb complaint, but it's just something I noticed. Um, her hair's uh, got this transparent treatment um, that a lot of them, oops, oh well, a lot of them ended up getting uh, later. She was, uh, I think, I want to say amongst some of the first they did. She definitely wasn't the first, but uh, uh, this is, it was still new when uh, when they released her, this technique of this transparent hair. Um the other thing I want to say about the paint are these uh, the wraps that she has around her. Um, they have kind of a, a black, uh, almost like a wash in them. Uh, so it gives it a kind of a nice three-dimensional look. Uh, it gives it a sense of depth. And it really makes that red pop pretty well. And uh, I like it a lot. One of the other things that they did on this figure that I, I... I want to say that this is like one of the first ones they did it on. I could be wrong. Um is the way that they, they mold the skin around the wraps, it kind of looks like it's squeezing on our leg, the way it kind of bulges out a little bit on the top and around the sides. Um, you can see it there. Um, I don't, I can't think of an example that they did in the Bishojo line uh, before this that, that did that. Um, there have been a couple since, but uh, I don't think before, and I really I appreciate that. Um, that little bit goes a long way in my book. Um, but this red is, uh, it's very nice. It's a very deep red, and, uh, I mean, you can see just all down the front here how dynamic it kind of makes everything look. It really makes all of the details in the sculpt, uh, stand out. Very good job with the paint. The pose I really like a lot. Uh, like I say, she's kind of, very dynamic pose. She's kind of striding across this roof. It looks like she's... I don't know, like she's in action, like she's walking. It's not as posy as some of the other uh, Bishojo stuff. I was going to show you a size comparison, but I just wanted to compare these two just to kind of illustrate some of the points um, and uh, help me illustrate the next kind of thing I wanted to talk about, which is the base. So I don't know what um, Shadow Cat is meant to be doing here. I don't know if this is running. I don't know if this is... Uh, jumping, landing, flying, uh, I don't know, but it's very posy. It looks like she's posing for a picture to me. Now, I don't mind that too much, but I would prefer something more dynamic like this, uh, where she doesn't necessarily look like she's posing. Um, so I want to go back to that point about uh, more modern techniques. Um, if you look at the faces of these two, um, I don't know that that necessarily looks like Shadow Cat. Um, I, I can't think of an instance that that there's a Shadow Cat that that resembles. But that's okay. It resembles Shunya's uh, art just fine. I don't have a problem with that. But she's got a lot more going on. She has that focus I was talking about. She's definitely looking at something. Uh, Electra has a kind of a vacant vacant stare in comparison, and. Uh, yeah, 
little more going on in, in the face, a little more character, a little more personality in the Shadow Cat's face um, than in Electra's. She just, <laughs> like I say, she really looks like, especially like right here to me, she really looks like she's thinking about something dumb. Something really. Anyway, um, so I want to talk about the bases. So now, this is one of the best bases. This is one of my favorite bases that they've done. This uh, shingle roof, this Japanese style roof. Um, it's got the daredevil little demon in the edge here. I kind of wish it had the DD in the forehead. That would have made it a little more obvious, I suppose. But uh, kudos to whoever thought of that one and uh, and made that work. It's very nice. Didn't need to have that in there. And uh, it's a nice little nod to daredevil. Uh, if you don't know, Electra and daredevil are um, very closely intertwined in their storylines and relationships and all that. Um, the roof is done pretty well, I gotta say. Um, the back side of it and the bottom of it, nothing uh, too special. I like that it's a nice flat filled in base. It's not just like an edge or a hollow, like uh, oops, like somebody like that. I don't know. So uh, that make, gives it some a little more substantial something to sit on. You can put her on a, some kind of display base that um, will actually support her okay when that base is filled in. Um, and, uh, I don't know, it feels like a quality base. It's very nice. One of the best, I think, they've made. This is what we get nowadays. <laughs> and this kind of varies, but I feel like the lately, more often than not, you uh, the bases that come with these uh, statues are pretty lackluster. And I don't even know what this is supposed to be. It kind of has like a... I, and I've covered this in this Shadow Cat review. But it's got some kind of texture on it. Um, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. It's kind of like a, a diamond texture. Um, and then it's just a hollow base. It's like super chintzy, if you ask me. I think that's a lame base. Um, but uh, Electra's got one of the cooler ones. Really makes her stand out, I think, in the uh, on the shelf. She's one of the cooler looking uh, statues that I got. And... Uh, I don't know, I, I wish uh, we can kind of get a happy medium. New modern techniques, better facial detail. Um, like these, the paint applications have gotten better. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this Electra. Mine's got a tiny little imperfection right behind her leg. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right there, little spot of paint. No big deal. Uh, that's really nothing. But uh, I think this, this, is a, this Electra statue is a good balance of... Uh, of everything, paint, whoops, paint, sculpt, pose, uh, the character herself is really cool, I've always liked Electra, and, uh, she comes with, uh, some weapons, and it's hard to hate on that, these weapons are really cool too, by the way, her size, Let's see if I can get it to focus in on these, uh, almost, almost there, bear with me here, there we go, uh, her sides have pretty good paint applications. It's uh, all very accurate paint. Uh, there's no mistakes on mine, as best I can tell, um, which is impressive. Uh, the silver is very metallic looking. It looks um, about as metallic as metal gets, I suppose. It's kind of uh, reflective uh, silver. Uh, the, this little jewel-looking deal in the center that's uh, red just like her uh, costume. So is the end of the handle. And uh, it also has this little design at the end of the handle. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, I'm thinking it's probably some kind of like Electra type logo. I'm unfamiliar with whatever that design is. It doesn't look like kanji or anything like that, so I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but uh, pretty cool. Black or uh, kind of like gunmetal silver handle with a gold uh, kind of swirl. I don't know what to call that exactly, but the, the grip on the handle is gold. Um, very nice. Better than they need to be, I think. Um, and they're removable. Her hands look really wonky without them. Um, maybe that you can pull that one off without with just one side. But the, the one on the front here, the way her fingers separate there, very clearly supposed to have the blade through there. Um, and it will look funny without it. Well, I might as well show you. <laughs> there you go. Not sure really what's going on there. Also, I think that this finger 
is its own separate piece. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap in between the wrapping on her hand and that part that goes on her finger. Um, and it looks like there's a little bit of gap in the plastic too, but I can't quite tell. Anyway, try to stick this back in. This is a little more complicated than um, maybe it looks. I don't know. I feel like uh, this doesn't go... the <laughs> Her, she doesn't just hold on to these sides that easily, all that easily. Uh, maybe I make it more complicated than it needs to be. Bear with me. There it goes. And, uh, you know, you can put them either way. You can, she can hold them either which way. Mm. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so all in all, I, I really dig Electra. She has a couple of little issues, but they're pretty minor. And uh, it's I don't think they were necessarily like any bad choices or whatever. But um, if her face had a little bit more of uh, the kind of modern Kodo touch, the kind of a little bit more, um, I don't know, personality or focus, and this thing, this sash right here, didn't come out to the corners as far as uh, it does, and it was a little more closer to the illustration. This would be like a, a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, but not quite there. Maybe closer to a 8 out of 10 for me. Um, so here's a quick size comparison. You've seen uh, Kitty Pride and uh, X-23. X-23, just kind of FYI, is my favorite Bishojo to date. Um, the X-Force version. Uh, it has its problems. This stupid... <laughs> display base for her, her dirt patch, uh, and amongst other things, but uh, X you can't beat X-23, that's my jam. Anyway, uh, there she is, thanks for watching, um, all in all, I think uh, you should get Electra if you don't have her in your collection, she's definitely worth picking up, uh, they're still available on um, Kodo's website for 60 bucks, uh, very easily worth it. Uh, I think once you see the red uh, costume in person that uh, you'll appreciate um, how kind of dynamic and eye-catching she is on a shelf. Um, if, uh, if you're not really a fan of the past uh, Bishojo figures, if, uh, the more, if the more modern ones, maybe if you're kind of one of these people that uh, jumped on kind of late because you think that they're better now or whatever, uh, then you may not want to get uh, Electra. But uh, for me... I think she looks great. Um, very happy to have her. And uh, that's about all I got to say about her. I do have some other Mishoto statues laying around like her that I haven't done reviews for. Uh, I've got Storm, for one, which I actually recorded a review for and uh, lost it. Never posted it. I also got uh, Poison Ivy and uh, Scarlet Witch, the original one of the original Mishoto's, uh, Invisible Woman, Black Cat, and Agent G. Uh, so... If someone out there is listening, uh, interested in seeing any of them, let me know, and uh, I might just find my way, find some time, I should say, to uh, make that happen. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this, but <laughs> just to give you a good look at these figures. Um, and uh, looking forward to Psylocke, Psylocke, X-Force Psylocke is the next one coming out. Uh, I'll definitely be doing a review of her. She's on her way, she's been shipped, but... Uh, I'm a cheapskate, so I got that slow shipping, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a while before I get mine, but she's on her way. Um, um, excuse me. Subscribe, please. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'll have more stuff coming up. Check out my past videos. Uh, hit the like button. Share them, and uh, thanks for watching.